Hello folks, I'm Scott Grove. Um, I've had a lot of requests to do something that um, does not exist, <laughs> or should not exist. It does exist strictly to rip you off. Um, this is a um, request for people, hey, how can I get finger exercises or scales or warm-up things and all this kind of junk? You shouldn't. Um, it's all bull. Okay? So if you are being taught finger exercises, warm-up licks, blah, 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 you're getting ripped off. Um, kick your teacher's ass right now because you're getting ripped off. Um, I'll give you something here to do for free, but there's no need for it. But I will teach you an invaluable lesson here. Okay, so um, stick with me on here and you will get something here to be able to play in each and every single key there is in the entire world here and now today all the lead licks you could uh, possibly imagine in such a little tiny area of this little pseudo scale thing I'm going to teach you. Okay, so again, if you feel some need to, for exercises, there's no need for them. If you need finger stretching things, go like this. Okay, that's it. Do push-ups or something. Um, that'll give you more of an exercise than anything you can do on your guitar. Um, swear to if there's anybody up there okay so let's get down here and actually get to business and quit to my yapping I know I love to yap more than anybody yep we're going with the baby guitar this time okay so what we're going to simply do is um, a straightforward scale I've got the uh, old distortion box on right now so we'll start with that the scale will be oh let's sound scholarly it will be thusly okay which will be <laughs> Okay, you've heard it a million times, it's a major pentatonic, whatever that means, to the third power times pi. I will show you with the uh, same thing with a bunch of hammer-ons and pull-offs. I'll show you how to do those, and I'm going to show you so much more right now. I'm going to demonstrate each of the little licks I'm going to show you during the course of this next, um, however long it takes, an hour or so maybe. Mm -hmm. To Yeah, I can put videos on here that long. So, we're doing a full-scale lesson here. Yeah. No pun intended, a full scale lesson. Yes, I'm in the key of D here at the 7th fret. Um, so this here is basically what I'm going to do with the hammer-ons and pull-offs. For those of you who think you need the exercises or such things. Okay, slowly it will be... Faster. Okay, and as you get good at this, you will be able to sit there and just do partial things. You know, you just don't want to do that. That sounds guitarded. Okay, so you just sit there in the middle and hammer around. so you can grab bits and pieces of it. So I will be showing you that. If we were to go to a clean mode, same thing, and play it backwards instead of forwards, you get this. Okay, nice delays, cool stuff. But you can sit there and make some cool music with that. And even if I didn't have all the garbage going on. Okay, so I'll be showing you all of that and how to play just straight out of these type of things. That's all in the key of D. Okay, so if you are in D, we're gauging everything off of our third fret, okay? Um, so everything will be our, our third string, I'm sorry. Um, right now we're in D on the third string, okay? So that note is D, so on your G string, all the way up here to the seventh fret, that is D. So if you're playing the D string, G string, 
and B string all covered at the seventh fret with what is called a bar. That means your finger is just laying across those three strings. D, G, and B string. That is your D chord, no different than if you were playing it way down here. Okay, same thing. Okay, so no difference at all. Okay, so what was this whole mess here at the beginning? Okay, the scale is going to be this. Okay, um, keep that finger here at all times. I'm going to actually have you cover one more note for now. So bring it up here to uh, cover up the A string also. And also cover up the E string. So basically cover every flipping string you have. Okay? <laughs> uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is actually go on the low E string and get the scale down first which will be so when I say seven that just means seventh fret or the finger that you have barred across everything is barred completely across at the seventh fret so if I say ten that means you go to the tenth fret okay so I'll say low E string seven ten so that means low E string seven seventh fret then tenth fret Okay, now A string will be 7-9. You can see which finger I'm using, so I won't waste your time with saying use your ring finger. So you can just look and see which finger I'm using. Okay, so from beginning all the way down, we'll do low E string, 7-10. Now your A string will be 7-9. D string will be 7-9. G string will be 7-9. Okay, now the next one I'm going to go ahead and show you everything that can be done, which will be 7-8-10. Um, okay, look at my positioning for my fingers, which ones I'm using. So first finger, middle finger, pinky, and then finally on your high E string, you're going to go 7, 9, 10. Different fingering. First finger, ring finger, pinky. Okay, so again, one more time, starting from the low E string, 7, 10. A string, 7, 9. 7, 9 on the D. 7, 9 on the G. 7, 8, 10 on your B and on your high E string we're going to do 7, 9, 10. Okay, so those are all the notes that can be used. Period. No others can be used. Okay, those are the notes. Those aren't all the frets you can use, but those are all the notes you can use. What do I mean? I'll show you later. Okay, so for right now Let's just get part of this happening by doing the 7, 10 on your low E. Then all the way down like we did. 7, 9, 7, 9, 7, 9 on the next three. Now I just want you to do 7, 10 on the B string. And then 7, 10 on the high E string. Okay, so we'll do 7, 10. Then seven nine seven nine seven nine, and then seven ten seven ten. Okay, so you got seven ten on your low E string, seven ten on your B and E over here, and then the three in the middle, which name your chord on your D, G, and B strings will all be seven nines. So seven ten, seven nine, seven nine, seven nine, seven ten, seven ten. time for my sake. Okay, so that is the very basic scale of this. Okay, now these are the notes that you can use. What were the other notes that I showed you in there? Okay, those will come in handy a lot here shortly. Okay, now what was I doing to make it sound all oh, cool?
and just by adding distortion like I did earlier um, it will get cooler sounding but right now let's do it clean so you can hear what's actually going on okay these are called hammer-ons and pull-offs for those of you who don't know hammer-on simply means that you are actually taking our 7, 10 and actually taking it and making your pinky like a hammer you actually play 7 you're not going to use your pick anymore you're only going to hit it once so you're going to get three notes out of this hammer on you use your pinky like a hammer you hammer the note on there just like you're trying to hammer a nail into there and then when you pull it off you're actually using what is kind of like a pick but you're using your pinky to pull the string down a little bit and then let off and it actually picks the note instead of your guitar pick okay so your hammer on you hammer it on then when you pull it off you don't have to do much just barely 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 pick it again that takes more time than the rest of this lesson will so anytime you want to pause it <laughs> now's a good time to do it just to try to get to try to be able to sit there and do that for those of you who can't do that already I use the first note pick just to get me going and until you can get it going constantly without stopping no need to move any further okay so once you have that then we'll go to the next one just and the next one you've learned how to do them all okay once you have okay then you get to come back to this and here is what I'm going to teach you are the hammer outs and pull offs and the order in which to do them for your most exercise if you really need exercise <laughs> half speed and full speed okay so it's an exercise if you really need one I stress to you you don't need it but the scales I'm teaching you here are uh, very useful so um, continue with the lesson please but know that you do not need to practice you don't need to stretch your fingers you don't need that garbage <laughs> it is not worth spending uh, $30 per lesson on it. Some music store, it's, it's retarded. Guitarded, I should say. Retarded is something we shouldn't make fun of. Okay, the hammer-ons and pull-offs now to get these going are going to be the, the first two. So you're 7, 10, 7. So that's 7, 10, then pull-off to 7. Then we're doing our seven nine seven on our A string. Okay. Okay. So that's what we got. Seven ten seven. Okay, we're doing three sets of these at a time. So we'll be doing the E string, the A string, and the D string. You already know what notes they are. Seven ten seven, seven nine seven, seven nine seven. So you do seven ten seven. 797 seven. then 797 seven. okay that's it now the trick to making this sound cool for later is to let most of them ring as much as you can okay so you're not palm muting them down here when you add distortion later it sounds cool to mute them it just really thickens it up and all you can either rewind and check it out or wait till later to get that okay so what we're doing are those first three so that your E string your A string and your D string now you just back it up one string now we go A string D string G string back it up one string so now you're back to your D string G string and B string back it up again one string so now you're starting on the G string B string E string 
Okay, now as you're coming backwards, we need to back it up again. We're going to back it up down to the B string. Okay, what do we do there? We do the B string. Okay, so B string, E string, back to the B string as we're coming backwards. So B string, E string, B string. Now we're going to go to the G string. Okay, which is G string, B string, G string again. Okay, so it's slightly different coming back. Then D string, G string, D string. So D string, or yeah. D string, G string, D string. Now A string, D string, A string. Now, to simply end it, you're playing 7 10 on your low E string. So coming backward. finally end up on another D note. Okay, so that's it. Okay. Or you can do that if you want. Any of that stuff. So same notes. Whatever you want, this is up to you. This is your stretching method, so <laughs> have fun with it. Okay, now the reason I showed you the other notes are because they are in this scale. You've heard this before. Start on the G string and do all the notes. And backward. No way, me That's just your major scale, okay? But this is used for everything in the world. Everything in the world is based on that scale. And if it's a minor scale, it is still based on that scale, but you have to flat the third. You have to do this, you have to do that. But uh, for today's purposes, just know that everything is based on that scale. And then it's what you do to that scale that makes it different for other scales. Okay? So, um, now that we have... All that is is getting faster. Okay? Nothing more. So... If you need to work on getting faster and getting your fingers worked up to speed then that's a good one to do if you must do it, okay? Don't just do it like that. Stop in the middle and go nuts for a while. That's just D string and G string. Remember I showed you other notes. That note, for example, the 8th fret on your B string, put that in there. Alternate between the 8th fret and the 10th fret on that B string. Okay, so it just gives you options. So that is a good exercise if you need it. Plus, it's a good way to teach you a scale. Okay? Um, there was a blonde girl once went in for an audition. She had no idea how to sing. Um, she went in. The guy, the coach said, Can you sing scales? She's like, Scales! Scales! I know. Old joke. Anyway. <laughs> uh, you had to have been there, trust me. Okay. Now... What do we do from here? What does all this mean? Again, I was asked to do something for you to warm up, to stretch. So those are stretches, and are you getting warm? Okay, so mission accomplished, and it don't cost you $300 to learn that. Um, I was showing you earlier with a little delay, and uh, coming backward from
What is all that? Same thing I've already showed you. All that is, is um, because it's pretty, I'll try to keep this glare down as much as I can. There's bright lights here. Why? It's hard to see the guitar in the dark. Um, that is coming back from that exact same whole scale thing, and that is doing E string and B string are covered at the 10th fret. Okay, so E string, B string. Now 7, same thing. Now B string, 10. G string, 9. Now 7 and 7, same string. Now 9 and 9 on G and D. 9 and 9, same, or sorry, 7 and 7, same string. Now 9 and 9 on D and A string. 7 and 7. 9 on the A. And ending back there, it's just... So it's nothing complicated, it's exactly what we've been doing. But you're just doing two strings and letting them ring on top of each other. So E string again and B string, 10 and 10. Same two strings will always follow. Same two strings will always follow. Back down to seven and seven. So ten and ten. Seven, seven. Now ten and nine. Seven, seven. Nine and nine. Seven, seven. Nine and nine. Seven, seven. Seven. I'm sorry, nine. Seven, ten. Okay, so throw a delay on it and you have pretty pretty. notes that I showed you in the scale. We're just throwing some delay on and making it pretty. Okay, so now the same thing. I'm going to turn on some of the uh, distortion. Pardon my static electricity. And do the same exercise or your warm-up thing or your hammer-ons and pull-offs, whatever you want to call them. Listen how they sound now. If you actually take this part of your hand, the meat of your hand, on your pinky side, place it back here by the bridge, not on the bridge, not on the saddles, okay, not right here, but right in front of them. So they're, if you put it too far here, you get nothing. Keep moving it back until it gets chunky. You hear the note, but yet it is still somewhat muted. You're not hearing, you're hearing that, not that, not that, keep going back until you actually hear the same note, but it stops. That is called chunk, my friends. And this is midnight and my wife's asleep, so our chunk is at like 20 decibels, so we're not in fear of waking up anything but the cockroaches. Okay, so the same thing we were doing before, if you mute it with that part of your hand on these strings, and do the you get that effect so that's just a technique of using that part of your hand resting on the strings themselves but way back next to your bridge but not open like this because then you get a bunch of bumblebee mess you actually just mute it Palm muting is what this is called. Okay, so it's nothing more than what we did before. You're just adding distortion to it. That's where it gets cool for some of you. Okay?
at the Whammy Bar, and you're a rock star. Okay, now, what is it that is so cool about all this stuff that I'm talking about you can learn to play in every key? Okay, here's the deal, kitties. Um, like, say we're in the key of D, because why? We are. Let me get a better guitar sound. Okay, so here we are in the key of D, and you need to learn to play some solos. But how do you make up a solo? I don't know. Well, you've already got most of the tools to figure them out. Every note that you already played is a safe note, meaning that no matter what note out of all these, um, you cannot play a bad note using that. Um, the thing is, while you're playing a D, somebody's playing this D chord. I will get at this angle so you can see everything. Yeah, I'm a country guy, so deal with me. If you want to play a solo, That's using nothing more than my imagination and the notes that I just showed you. Okay, I can keep on going. And what's all those two notes I hear? That's just hitting two of them together. Okay, now this is what is called harmonies. I'm going to show you how to play harmony notes with yourself. Um, you'll hear this a lot in the 70s, but um, this is a cool thing for you to learn because it is a theory challenge. Um, this is playing exact, showing you exactly what I've showed you before, but playing two notes at a time. So now we're going to do... So you've heard this stuff before, but it usually takes two guitar players to play it. One playing one note, one playing the other. These are nothing more than the hammer-ons I've showed you. Well, we don't have to hammer them on this time. So we're going to take the two low strings, the low E string and the A string, play them. Then we play the two notes that I showed you. So ten and nine. Now the next two strings, your A and E, uh, D string, 7 and ninth frets. And now your next two strings, 7 and ninth frets. Now we have the lovely thing of something new here. We have the 7 and 7th fret on your G and B string. Now we get to do the 7th, I'm sorry, the ninth fret with your ring finger on your G string. And then that other note that we've opted for, the 8th fret, here on your B string, we're going to use those two together. Okay. Now you can move both of those up the neck. Slide them if you want. Two whole frets. That's called a whole step. If it was up one fret, it would be half a step. Two whole frets is called a whole step. So you've learned something new. Then come back a whole step. And then you can do the two on the B and E string. And you can also go from how, how you had your pinky at the 10th and 10th fret on the B and E string. Go up there and grab it with your first finger. The whole step forward to the 12th fret and back. This is called a slide. Pick it once and then slide it up to the 12th fret and back without ever hitting it again. It's like doing a hammer on and a pull off but without taking your finger off the guitar. So it's another one to work on. 
then so you could do those two together. So 10 to 12, back to 10. Then this one from 8 and 7. I'm sorry, 9 and 8 up to 10 and 7. I'm getting all kinds of lost. <laughs> from 9 and 8 up to 11 and 10. And slide it back and down to 7. Okay, you know what I meant. Do what I do, not what I say. Okay, so those are instant harmonies that you can get that are very cool. And again, if you add a little delay, you can have some cool stuff. Okay, so fun with toys. Okay, so that just gives you some more ideas of what you can do. Back to where I should have been. Okay, that was just some spur of the moment thing. In D. And playing licks. Go back to the seventh fret where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> so you have a guitar like this where everything stops at the end. This here's a Steinberger Spirit, by the way, that has been modified. And it Normally these take uh, guitar strings that have a ball on each end of the string. So, you, But this here has an adapter at the top, so you can just run any old string through here. Clamp it down with your Allen wrench. Chop it off and you don't have to buy the double end ball strings if they don't make your brand or whatever. So nice little adapter. Uh, you can Google it and look up Steinberger nut adapter or and uh, or string adapter it'll come right up where you can find these things they're forty dollars for any of you guys who have a guitar like this that don't want to use those kind of strings so just a little extra tidbit for you in case you have one of these guitars if you want them they're great they got this little flip out thing here on the bottom so that it don't just flop around on your lap like that just pull the bottom thing out it goes like this and it just sets there like a regular guitar would fit these things in your suitcase but yet the neck is actually full size everything's where it's supposed to be it's no shorter than any other neck it's um, even 24 frets pickups are where they're supposed to be whammy works great perfect tune you can dive bomb all day long okay back to where we're at in the key of D then we'll get out of this key and go to some others so you have all these notes now that you can play in the key of D. Okay, now I said those are the notes, but those are not the only ways of getting to the notes. Okay, especially on an electric guitar. Okay, you have this note. That note right there. On the B string at the 7th fret. We can get there. By sliding that ninth fret on the G string up a whole step, which you'll want to do sometimes. And I'm doing just what's called vibrato there, that's just a nervous tick, but it's very musical. Okay. Or you can actually bend the string upward. Okay. I like to use two fingers to bend it upwards. So the one that I played before, it's there on that string ready to go. Now I use both fingers to push that up. And that gives you that same note that would have been on the seventh fret on your B string. So that's one way to get some flavor on here. Use a lot of vibrato there. Okay, same thing on Okay, so normally you would have had, now you go, or slide it. 
Okay, so it's a matter of how you want to get there. Okay? So you can slide or bend. these notes to get to those same notes. So the best thing you can do is listen for the next note that should be in this scale. So the next one would have been that. One, two, three, bing. How can I get there? You can bend the note down instead of up or push it up. Just think of things, how to get to another note without actually going there a way to bend to it. Now the next one be here. Then the next one. Next one should be here. So you have So that's another way to get lots of uh, different methods to getting to the same notes. This is where you start getting good at lead guitar, which is playing all these different variables of how to get from one note to another. showed you how to play two notes together even these two but I'm just going to bend one of them up and I'm going to do these two that we've already know the eighth I'm sorry ninth fret and tenth fret but I'm bending one of them up remember so that's a good mind game to try to figure out which notes can bend and which ones can't. I had to teach all of this to myself. Um, lessons were not um, in my um, forecast when I was younger. I took some and realized that I was getting gypped right off the bat, so I quit and I figured it all out on my own. So hopefully this will help you get past some of this. I'm not teaching you all of it. Why? Because I make a living on selling the rest of them, but um, Having somebody show you every little thing is not going to make you learn. It makes you a parrot. So I leave a lot of this open-ended so you can actually learn. Best way to learn is to figure a lot of it out on your own. Okay, that's why I'm leaving so many holes here. Okay, so in the key of D. Now you know this, but you have to practice on it. You can do all that stuff I just showed you. about what is called phrasing, the way you play it. One good example. Okay, so it's just how you hear it in your head, just like somebody else would sing something. Okay, so now if you're in D, and then you go to the key of G, which in most songs, you, if you were in D, you would do D, G, and A. And then G. Back to D, and then A. If you're a country boy like me, anyway, that's what you'd be doing. But remember, from the very beginning, the G string on your guitar, for this particular exercise anyway, names where you're going to put the bar, or your finger. you got to set the bar. Okay? Um, this time we go to G. It's really, that's the hardest one. You can do it open because just open G string, but then you have to think all this stuff open. Which you will have to.
to know anyway. But first of all, try it way up here. G on your G string is at the 12th fret. And you play everything the same. So everything we learn is identical. Everything is the same, okay? So it all means exactly the same thing. If you're in A, if you're in Canada, everything's in A. A, you go to whatever note is A on your G string. There's G, G sharp, A. So you play the whole thing in A. Even the... Again, if you're going to distortion mode and you want to play it heavy and do some palm muting, down here in A is the stretchiest place. So if you feel that you need to stretch your fingers for some reason, other than doing this, I swear to anybody, doing that is just as good, if not better, than doing all this on your guitar. Um, there are no such thing as stretch exercises on your guitar. It is guitarded to think so. And again, if somebody tries to charge you money to teach you that, shoot them in the head. <laughs> okay? Okay, so here we go. Um, same thing, I'm doing it in A, but this is the biggest stretch. It'll also give you um, cramps in your hands. You want that? No. <laughs> so do this instead. Okay, but in A, way down here. <laughs> Back to clean sounds. Same notes. Yeah, it's starting to sound like a song, huh? Imagine that. That's just by doing stuff I showed you. What was that? Dwing, dwing. That's going to that note, but doing it, instead of going to it here, you slide to it, or bend to it. But you always come back to this shape, this bar. It doesn't always have to stay here, but think of it as there in your mind, okay? So it's always kind of there. Um, the thing you could do now is release that whole thing, and let's just do it one note at a time and just pretend that bar is there, okay? We're always gonna keep doing this. Okay, so you have to take away the training wheels, the bar, but think of that. You just look at it and know that is your A position if you're using this one-fingered method here, okay? So that is what this is actually all about. And that's what it's all about. And that was played using the same notes I already showed you. Okay, so remember when you get up to heaven, you will find out, trust me, the hokey pokey Yes, that's what it's all about. Profound? No, it's guitarded. That's why you're here with me, Scott Grove, here on Late Night Guitarded TV. Okay. <laughs> yes, I've lost my mind. Um, if you find it, please return it to somebody that can use it, because I never will. Um, same exact notes. It don't matter if somebody calls out the key of B flat. Oh. B flat don't mean somebody that has lower than an A cup bra size. That yes, they B flat, but that ain't what it means. If you're in the key of A, you go up one, that is A sharp or B flat. But all of a sudden you can play in that key. Why? 
because I showed you how to do it. You could do the invisible. Okay, I know it's supposed to all be there, but now I can take my hands off and play freely. <laughs> kind of catching on there. If you want to go to B, move it up to B, play everything the same. Get rid of the invisible wall. Okay, you can take off the training wheels. See how everything comes back though. That wall ends up back there eventually. Um, C, just move it up one more. C, 3D. C, <laughs> yes he needs a manicure. It never changes, it's all the same thing. So again, then we're back up to D, then we're up to E, then we're up to F, then we're back to G, okay? So it's that simple. So if you guys, uh, once again, if you need the exercise, um, go run around the block. Really. Um, if you need hand exercise and you think you need a tennis ball, you don't. You just open and close your hand. That's all the more exercise you need. Do you need exercise to play a guitar? No. Do you need stretching exercises to play a guitar? It doesn't hurt unless you stretch it too far. Then it hurts. But no, you don't have to do it on the guitar. It is not necessary. It is in no way needed. And again, people will be ripping you off if they make you pay to learn exercises. You will see things called exercise one, exercise two, all this crap in these guitar books. That's exactly what they are. Crap, wasting your money, wasting your time. Don't do them. Come see me. I'll help you out. Okay. So that is basically it for this uh, free lesson. You can always visit me. Scott Grove at GroovyMusicLessons.com Groovy is spelled G-R-O-O-V-Y There is no E in Groovy. Okay? That's where the sometimes Y comes in. It's Groovy. G-R-O-O-V-Y MusicLessons.com And check out some of my lessons. I have a lot of free ones on the HTML site. Not the Flash site, but the HTML site. They're two totally different sites but you get to them both from GroovyMusicLessons.com. Both are completely different. Both have very cool things about each of them. Check them both out. Okay, looks like I have still a little more time here. I can drive some of this home. Um, again, just work on these and use your own brain. Get to all these other notes. I'm back in D again, by the way, if you can't tell. Here at the seventh fret. Get to the other notes by sliding or by bending. Get there as many ways as you can. Can you get there bending up? Sure can. Can you get there bending towards the floor? Yeah. Will that become handy later? Bending towards the floor? I don't know. You tell me. like it to me. You can't bend up and do that. Nope. It won't work. So bending towards the floor is very cool, kids. thing and don't forget your vibratos too. It don't have to mean just the shaking up and down with your um, epilepsy or whatever you may have. And God love you if you do have it. But 
work on that and work on vibrato when you do a bend. Very subtle vibrato and slow vibrato can help a lot, especially with distortion. Check this out. Okay. tension when you wait to what is called resolve a note finally letting it down from that bend it resolves it back to where it's supposed to be so you're creating tension bringing it up slowly you're creating tension releasing it to where it resolves that so the vibrato can be nice and slow or it can be manic okay so or it can be this way <laughs> good old whammy bars gotta love them anyway so there you go the started off hammer-ons pull-offs that's a lot to learn in one lesson but it is here on YouTube and it is also on the HTML site choice of groovymusiclessons.com there are a bunch of free lessons on there on the left hand side if you go there it says free lesson clips guess what it will be there <laughs> along with all the others that are free and you can pick up every lesson I have so cheap on there you can download them not have to get DVDs or nothing you can get external hard drives whatever you want preloaded with everything so anyway I will show you my pretty face um, why because I know it's pretty yeah I'm a geezer with a bad need for a shave so I know I'm pretty <laughs> I got a 70s haircut I got a 70s shirt and I've got a 80s kids guitar here but um, again, don't let anybody tell you you have to do all this um, stretching and exercising junk because it's, unless it's Pilates or some kind of junk like that, there's no such thing. This is just something somebody invented a long time ago. So this is more of a lesson for scale work, if you will. I hate scales. There's no real need to learn them. Um, Yes, I said that. There's no need to learn scales. Get my Learn Electric Lead Guitar lesson, um, and you will learn how to play lead guitar quicker than anybody in the world and never have to learn a scale. Um, most of the famous people, uh, guitar players in the world, couldn't tell you one scale from another. The, you know, <laughs> there wasn't no such thing as scales as far as they knew back when they were learning, so um, you don't have to learn them either. I'll teach you how to play uh, lead guitar in two weeks uh, faster than anybody will teach you that you pay in five years guarantee it or your money back that simple so come see me again groovymusiclessons.com go to either of the two sites HTML site is the one I personally operate and maintain the flash site is very fancy and um, has its own niche too so um, come see me at either one, give me a rattle, and enjoy playing, and enjoy your exercising. If you want to exercise, run around the block, okay? Otherwise, you want to learn how to play guitar, do what I showed you. That's learning how to play guitar. Learn. Don't just watch other people and expect them to show you the whole thing, okay? Do some of the work for yourself. That's why I left the holes there. Don't just expect somebody to fill those in for you. Do it yourself. It's not that difficult. It's a guitar. You've got people like Green Day, for God's sakes, who are millionaires that can't play more than a bar chord. Okay? And still, after all these years, they don't, you know, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, so many untalented bands. Won't name no names, but, um, yep, they became successful and dead and all that stuff. And, uh, 
never really learned to play, but you can play quicker and better than them in a couple weeks worth of time if you really want to and you come see me. And um, I'll hook you up, okay? Hope you enjoyed the little lesson or whatever the heck this was. And how do I teach on my normal lessons? Pretty much like this, but <laughs> it's more specific and the lessons are longer. But again, Scott Grove, and yes, I talk this much all the flipping time. So if you can stand to hear this voice and see this beautiful mug of mine, yeah, whip out your wallets and I will rape you for a whole $4 for a download of a five hour lesson. Ooh, how can you afford it? My mercy. <laughs> anyway, hasta la pasta. Get your butt out there. Work on something. Learn something for yourself. I have gave you, the, like I always like to say, the little building blocks. Now go build your own damn house. Okay? Bye.